Miss Ma, listen more. Me and my boudoir photography, episode one. Dear listeners, how are you? I am good too. Thank you. My name is c h a n t i r a n a m b o n g and I am a photographer from Thailand. This is episode one of my new podcast about boudoir photography. We also have the episode zero from last week, which is I'm talking about. Um, everything I'm going to talk about on this podcast. So this week we start episode one. Today I will talk all about the history of boudoir photography and how I come to fall in love with it. So let's get start. In 2015, I was working full time shooting commission it. Architectural photography, and being a p r o f e s s o r for tourist magazine, including a little bit of fashion design career. I start to lose the passion of it. One day, I was looking at other people's work online, and these photographs just catch my eyes. It was an image: white woman wearing sexy lingerie. High heels, and she looked gorgeous in her makeup and hairstyle. The photographer had posed her in front of a mirror in her changing room, with the bedroom in the background. It was a uh, very classy, beautiful, but still sexy, and I love it. <laughs> Little did I know that I had stumbled into a g e l a c a l l e d boudoir photography. I immediately thought that I want to do this for a living. Wikipedia has the following to say about boudoir photography: Boudoir photography is a photographic style which featuring intimate, sensual, romantic. And sometimes erotic images of its subjects in photographic studio, bedroom or private dressing room environment, primarily intended for the private enjoyment of the subjects and their romantic partners. It is these things from g a m o and. Art nude photography, in that it is usually more subjective, rather than explicit in its approach to nudity and sexuality. Features subjects who do not regularly model and produces images. That are not intended to be seen by wide audience, <laughs> but rather to remain under the control of the subject. The term boudoir comes from the French language verb b o u d e r meaning the soak. And was primarily attributed to women dressing room and sitting room and private salons. Nude or sensualized female form had, has uh, has been a theme of photography since as early as 1840s. Early erotic photography, as such as French postcards. From late 19th or early 20th century, pin-up girls and Hollywood culture have influenced F, uh, the visual style of boudoir photography. Notable early boudoir photography include Albert Arthur Allen, who photographed Blanche's woman. Um, I mean, who photographed Blanche? Women against ornate backgrounds.
Boudoua during World War II. After this solution of the prohibition uh, in 1933 and the beginning of World War II, the U.S. government began using propaganda to encourage young men to fight for their country, with the knowledge that sex sales in military began using pin-up girls on their recruiting posters with a slogan like She's worth fighting for or Come home to young girls, a hero. This made a pin-up girl one of the most recognized form of boudoir and perhaps the way of modern boudoir by normalizing the female in advertising known for her million dollar legs actress you know who? Betty Glauber was the icon of pin-up girls in 1930s and 40s one of her most famous portraits was distributed to over 5 million troops during World War II. Not only was she known as one of the first women to take out insurance on body part, she was also known for being one of the highest paid female actors in Hollywood during her time. And boudoir in 20th century. Boudoir photography was popularized in the millennium with the arrival of digital photography. It became popular with women seeing the create private collection of a professional studio portrait. Boudoir photography dates from mid 1980s onwards and is characterized by empowerment of its female subjects who now are topically the photographer's direct clients rather than being high models. It is common for women to have boudoir photographs of themselves made as a gift to a partner. Conventionally, on occasion of their engagement, marriage, or before an enforced separation, such as military deployment. In the United Kingdom, it became popular of bride to be to commission for the photo shoot as a wedding gift for the groom. Boudoir photography is also sometimes given as a gift with the intention of reaffirming and encouraging romance and sensuality between partners in a long-term relationship. Increasingly, boudoir photography is seen as something that person might do purely for their own enjoyment. For pressure and affirmation of seeing themselves as attractive, daring, sensual, and sexually dissoluble. Boudoir photography encompasses as lunch of styles and moods. Name catalogically of boudoir photography includes so called nautical, fun and giggles, provocative, sensual, with variety degrees of explicitness and nullity. Visually, the jela is characterized by refused high-key images that flatter the appearance of skin, short focus distance, and shallow depth of field, which together impact an intimate, dreamy mood. Other common styles include a low-key, Delight belatedly, grandy, black and white, reflecting in influence of Art Nude's early erotic photography and film noir. Also, common are uh, poses and lighting setups intent to replicate the mood and appearance of classic pin up photographs and paintings. This is some part of where is boudoirs coming from? It's very interesting and beautiful. Some people might not even understand about sexy photo 
as a classy story and there is history about it. But as well as a lot of people also love it and I love it too. I have got my camera already from my work before. So what I have to do is build up a portfolio. Then I start asking around from expat friends who live in my hometown, Chiang Mai, who would like to have her own sexy photo by a female photographer like me for a free session. Few days later, one woman contact me. June is a beautiful Filipino woman who an expat living in Chiang Mai, and she is quite popular, confident woman in town also. I was so happy to shoot her. So I went to get some props like flowers, fabrics for the background and create an atmosphere for the shoot. June has beautiful, sweet, sexy face, eyes, long hair. She has a bit chumpy body at that time, but that wasn't bother me instead. This type of girls very challenged for photographs. My aim with Boudoir business was make a woman become beautiful, sexier, confident more than their real life. I want to make the normal woman who was not experienced and or not confident become a confident person. I have done some research a bit how to shoot Champika and the other all kind of girls as well. What poses and style suit each body and each character to make them look amazing. <laughs> At the shoot, I had June lie on her stomach on the bed. I was standing about 45 degrees from her head side. I asked her to put her arms up against the floor and face to me. Then I also shoot her from the top, have her lie on her back and I was standing on the chair shooting from the top as like bird eye view shot. I also try to pose her body in curves as much as she can, legs never stay straight, arms should not close to the body or put them up above the side head, holding her hair or something like that. In this case, I can uh, edit and make her slimmer and build up the body in the way I wanted to on my post-processing Photoshop. <laughs> After I also have a few other expat women contact me, I think they are June's friends. Words of mouth is always amazing and fast to promote your works. After just a short while, I have got a beautiful, sexy, body woman, young woman, elder woman, chumpy woman on my portfolio. So, I have all kind of girls in just a short while. It's amazing, isn't it? Now it's the time to take off. I start create my personal Facebook into business area and as a boudoir photographer and post the images I have every day to promote my work. Um, I start to post my images on some photographer groups and some women expat groups in Bangkok also and in Pattaya, in Chiang Mai or around Thailand. But I also be careful about my image. It's very really sexy. In some group, they might not accept. So we have to uh, we have to look very well, care very well about that, and that to let the people know me that I am a female boudoir photographer now in Thailand. <laughs> I try to create my first session trips to Bangkok for a test. If this can be a real business for me or not. <laughs> and it turned out right away after an hour I post. A few women already give a comment under my post and also send me private text 
text messages that she is interested and asks when I am going to Bangkok for the session, and she want to book the sexy photo of herself to surprise her husband, <laughs> and some also for herself. <laughs> My gosh, amazing! <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I have got a business I want to do now. It feel like a dreams come true. So I took only three days for the first test to go to Bangkok, which I don't like the city that much. I book flight, tickets, hotel room that I can use to shoot, with a nice looking bed, sofa, big window, to get a beautiful natural light. My first start took for a years that I only shoot with natural light from window, the big window in the hotel room, for any of my boudoir station. Actually, it's the best romantic and cheapest light ever. <laughs> it's end up for three days boudoir trip in Bangkok was full bookings. <laughs> I don't even have time for lunch. Or do anything during the day, or it should. It was excited me a lot that people love this kind of photographs, and I know it that every woman want to feel confidence with her sexiness and her own body, no matter what. I also accept some corporate shoot with some popular girls in Bangkok. To let her promote my works to her communities, and that way we make the people know me more and even easier. From those popular girls, become became my models. And then later, I schedule for the next trip after three weeks. After the first one, and I start to stay for five to seven days each trips, and yes, in every single trips in Bangkok, full bookings, no lunch, no time. Ah, uh, sometimes I'm not even have time to drink water. <laughs> Seriously, I have no time to do anything else during the day. Only shoot this girl and the second one and the third one. All day, I started from 8:30 a.m. until finished the natural light from window around in the afternoon, like 5:30 p.m. Yeah, and then afterward, I end up in bed and my energy run out. <laughs> I also bring some props to make a girls more excited with. With um, like a flowers, a sexy lingeries, a high heels, a bunny balls, purse, necklace, and all fake vintage jewelries that usually no one will buy or wear it in real life, but everyone want to wear it for photo clubs. <laughs> Every time I got a new props, I always post on my social media, Facebook, before I take a trip to Bangkok. So girls are exciting every time when they see my post with the new props that I going to bring for the next session. In that way, I also got a booking right away after they saw the exciting. Props and toy that they want to wear and the girl exciting, right? <laughs> also, I always search for a nice hotel room, look elegant and classy, big window and big space. Also, on the budget too. <laughs> Every tips, I never stay in the same hotel for a change, and my old clients always keep coming back. For the new environments and the new backgrounds, mm. most of the time I use Facebook and Facebook page to promote and communicate with all my clients and targets. 
I create many kind of trends packages like boudoir package for confident single girl, boudoir for broken heart girl, <laughs> boudoir for her husband, boudoir for her girlfriends, um, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Boudoir for her girlfriend. Okay, right. Also, I make I make it in special occasions as well as New Year gift, Valentine gift, Chinese New Year gift, birthday gift, anniversary, a birthday for herself, birthday for him, um, bridal to su- for surprise her groom. In the first year, my weapons was a Canon 5D Mark III with only one lens that 24 1.5 millimeter f4 <laughs> that I shoot every single clients which is never disappointed me <laughs> I give a promising to deliver the photo from the session after the shooting date one week but the payment have to be done or at the shooting day this is my condition and everybody's happy with it I have three packages, start from one ounce, two ounce, three ounce maximum. Most of the clients book for two ounce, but some I took one and some I took three ounce, three ounce too. Oh my God, three ounce was a hardest one because when I shoot, I never sit down nonstop. It's just my personality. And it was something exciting me. Uh, I am doing what I love, right? I always feel like that my energy end up running ran out in the end of the day, every single day. <laughs> okay, by only one year, people in Thailand start to know me as a Pudua Baya. I also appreciate that so much until now. And I start to got a request from other photographers to run the workshop, which they love the way I, I did. I mean, they love the way I post the model. They love the way I use the, use the natural light. They love the way I create the station in different way. And they love that a, a lot of models by that time, they keep contacting me and want to shoot with me some famous one also asked for collaborate and yeah so the other photographer asked me for this <laughs> okay so stay tuned for the next episode is episode 2 I will talk about how I start to run my workshops and organize the session shoot with boudoir and nude art models in Thailand Stay tuned for it and thank you for all listeners to join my podcast episode 1 today. See you again next Wednesday. Love you all. Bye for now. Bye bye.